What's up guys, welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Rodell, and in today's video we have our fourth installment of the subscriber game analysis series. It's when you guys post a link to one of your own personal games. It could be from a tournament, it could be from an online game, and then it has a chance to be analyzed on this channel. Today's game was sent in from my guy Brendan Cooper as he played a solid game with the Ready Gambit, one of the most dangerous chess openings for white against the French defense. We actually made a video on it and I will leave a link to it at the end of this video. Video. Brendan's username only chess is Wings of Redemption and his rating for Blitz, as this was an online three minute game, is 1564. The game started off with Brendan playing the move e4, and now against the French defense, White has a ton of different options. Many people, however, don't want to play d4 and go into one of the main lines following d5 because the opening theory is so deep and there's so much memorization that has to take place. So many players are trying to find substitutes against the French defense. And in my opinion, one of the best possible ways you could play against the French and take your opponent out of their preparation is by playing the move B3 with the ready gambit. How on earth is this a gambit? Well, the whole idea is that after D5, we're not gonna take on D5 and we're not even gonna defend our pawn on E4 but instead just play the move bishop b2, fiend shadowing our bishop, and literally allowing black to take the pawn on e4. In the game, that's exactly what black played against Brendan, and we now see the move knight c3 attacking that pawn on e4. Now here in this position, there's really only two ways for black to defend the pawn on e4. In the game, we see the move f5 defending it with that f pawn, and honestly, I don't think that f5 is a very good move for black. Another option is knight f6 just naturally developing this knight, but even against this, we simply play queen e2, ganging up on that centralized pawn on e4, and now against a move like queen d4, which by the way is the only way for black to hold onto this pawn, we can simply castle kingside and notice how yes, black has held onto the pawn, but now their queen is in the center of the board with our bishop having vision on it. I mean, following a move like knight c6, we can now play f3, giving up a pawn. In fact, we're actually threatening to take the pawn on e4, but here black can take that pawn on f3, which I think is the best move, in which case we're now down a pawn, but now we have a huge attacking edge and honestly a huge advantage in development. I mean, we're simply gonna take back with the knight, we're attacking that queen on d4, and following queen b6 and d4, I mean, look at the amount of development we have. Both our knights are out, our bishop on b2, we've castled queen said, we have a very solid queen on e2, Black, on the other hand, only has three pieces out. We as white have d5 ideas in the air, knight a4, attacking that queen on b6. We could play moves like knight e4, knight e5. We're just playing chess, and I like white's game here. So yeah, guys, with the ready gambit, if black does play knight f6, trying to hang on to that pawn, just play queen e2, and then soon take with knight takes e4. However, if queen d4 is played, castle queen side, play f3, and you're going to have a very fun and attacking chess game. Here we see the move f5 from black, and now queen e2. Now I actually do think that this was a slight mistake from Brendan. The reason being is that now this bishop is locked in on f1. It literally cannot move, and we want all of our pieces, especially this bishop on f1, to become a very aggressive and attacking piece. So what can white do instead of play queen e2? I think better here is f3 simply attacking that pawn on e4. There's a ton of different moves that black can play here, but I think the most popular option is black simply taking that pawn on f3, in which case we're gonna take back with the knight. And now following knight f6, we're not gonna play queen e2, but instead play bishop c4 followed by queen e2. Notice how the bishop on c4 is much more active than a bishop on f1. And in fact, in this position, both our bishop and our queen are ganging up on that very awkward backwards pawn on e6, and it's gonna be very hard for black to hold onto this position. In fact, white is almost winning this game. I mean, if black does play a move like queen d7 or queen e7, it's gonna make their position cramped, it's gonna make their game awkward, and we're simply gonna to continue to gang up on that pawn on e6, which honestly, even if we don't win it, which we probably will, can't move for the rest of this game because we have such a grip on that e5 square with two of our minor pieces 
and our queen on e2. There was a master level game in which black played the move knight e5, but here white simply took that knight and then played bishop b5 with check, an active bishop on b5, an active bishop on b2, as well as this queen on e2 attacking that backwards pawn on e6. And this is a very difficult position to play as black, especially as our knight is ready to launch into e5 at a moment's notice. White has almost won this game. We have four very active pieces, and none of black's pieces have even left the first rank. So again, guys, against the move f5, trying to hold on to that pawn, that's completely okay. We will give black that pawn. We're simply going to play f3, trade off if he takes f3. We'll take back with the knight, continue with bishop c4, queen e2, put pressure on e6, probably castle queenside, and white has a very nice game there. Now here again in the game, we see the move queen e2, which by the way, isn't a blunder by any means by Brendan. I mean, here white still has a very playable position. We see the move knight f6 and now castling queenside and following bishop d6 from black, we see the move d4 from Brendan. Again, I do think that we needed to get this move f3 in sooner than later. I mean, by playing the move d4, it actually gives black the opportunity to play en passant by taking on d3. However, in this position, black did not do this and instead played the move c6. We then see king b1, and following castling kingside, Brendan then gets this move in f3. Now here in this position, we're simply wanting to take that pawn on e4, so we see black take the pawn on f3, in which case we take back with the knight. And this is more or less the position that you're going to see playing the ready gambit. The only difference being is that hopefully we're going to get our bishop on c4 instead of it being on f1. But again, still a very playable position for white, and we do have a very nice edge in development, not to mention the fact that this pawn on e6 and this square on e5 are both very weak. I mean, here black played the move queen e7, and Brendan continues with the very nice move knight e5, just throwing that knight right in the center of the board, really causing some trouble for the black pieces. And I think in this situation, black really does need to get these back rank pieces involved. I think black should play a move like knight bd7, maybe b5, opening up the b7 square for this bishop. But here in this position, black didn't try to develop, but instead trade off. And honestly, I'm a little bit confused by the move bishop a3, which is what was played. The reason I don't like this for black is that if you look at this position from a strategy standpoint, this bishop on d6 is actually very strong. Notice how black's pawns are on light squares and this bishop is on a dark square. It has a ton of range and a ton of mobility. This piece is already very strong. Why not get these other pieces involved? Now, one piece black does need to be worried about is this bishop on c8, which, by the way, could be referred to as a tall pawn. I mean, it literally can barely move. I guess the only good thing it's doing is defending the pawn on e6. But this is a piece that black should try to trade off, not the bishop on d6. And following bishop a3, black is giving up this bishop and giving up time when they're already down in development to this bishop on b2, which isn't a bad bishop. But at the same time, what's it really doing? I mean, even after the knight on c3 moves, its scope is going to be limited to d4. So again, it's not like this bishop is bad, but why would you give up your best minor piece? In this situation, Brendan wasted no time taking that bishop off the board, and then following queen takes a3, playing knight c4, kicking that queen back to e7. And now I actually really like this move that Brendan played with d5 advancing in the center of the board. We now have d6 ideas attacking the queen on e7 and creating a passed pawn. Here black saw this and decided to take the pawn on d5, in which case we have knight takes d5 attacking the queen on e7. And I think in this situation, black really does need to take that knight on d5. Against this, we're simply going to take back with the rook. Notice how the pawn can't take because we would simply win the queen. I think here in this position, I would give the edge to black because they're up a pawn. However, this is a very playable position for white. I mean, we could play a move like rook d2, knight d6, or knight e5, get our queen out of the way of the bishop, get this bishop involved, get that rook on h1 involved. We do have an advantage of development, and again, that pawn on e6 is very weak. It's going to be hard for this bishop to get active in this game, and I do think that white has a playable position here. However, in this position, following knight d5 from Brendan, we see black not take the knight on d5, but instead play queen f7. 
And here in this position, I mean, there's a ton of different ways that white can play. White could play knight d6, white could play knight c3, white could even take the knight on f6 and then play g3, which I personally think is the best variation for white. However, here in this position, we see Brendan play knight e5. And I honestly think that this is a very aggressive move. However, it is a mistake because it allows black into this game. Black did not find the move, but there is one single move here that gives black an edge. In fact, if any of you guys can find the move, which by the way is very difficult and very hard to find, if any of you guys can find that move and post it down in the comment section below, I will make sure to pin your comment on this video. Now notice how this queen is really gonna have a hard time moving anywhere at all. It can't move to e7, d7, c7, or g6, because both of our knights are attacking all of those squares and they would simply lose their queen. The move queen e8 doesn't work, because we play knight c7 attacking the queen, and we say thank you for the rook. So here in this position, we see black play the move queen h5, and there's a ton of different ways that we can win here. I mean, we could just take the knight on f6, which, by the way, is defending that queen, and then just capture the queen right off the board. But here, Brendan actually found the better variation with knight e7 check, and following king h8, we now see queen takes h5, and knight takes h5. Now here for a quick second, it may seem like, wait a second, what is Brendan doing? He could have instead took the knight and then won the queen. Why did he check and then simply trade off? Did he make a big mistake here? Well, it actually turns out that Brendan wasn't really worried about being up a queen, but instead winning the game. As we now see the move, knight f7 with check. Notice how this king can't move to g8 because of this knight on e7, and following rook takes f7, which is forced. We now have a back rank mate with rook d8 check, idea being after rook f8, we simply take that rook off, game over. If you'd like to learn the theory behind the ready gambit, one of my favorite openings for white against the French defense, click the video to the left. If you'd like to see our top 10 chess openings for black against d4, click the video to the right. Remember to send in as many games of yours as you want, the more the better, and as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.